Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench and it's a Saturday morning and it's cold and bleh. Uh, at least it's not windy and it's not raining. So, uh, here we go. Um, I've had a question this morning, emailed me from a gentleman called Peter Violetta. I'm sorry if I've slaughtered your surname there, mate. Um, now, I've already said that I don't take email questions anymore, don't respond to them because... I was getting sort of 30 or 40 and even more and it was just taking me two three hours a day to sit down and reply to them all and i just don't want to do it anymore because it's just, it, i don't get i don't even get a thanks a lot of the time so um i don't bother anymore um but this this question has come in and it is basically just the one question and i was starting to write a reply and i thought the easiest thing to do is put a video together just a quick one so that the question that's being asked will be answered and i'm sure other people are wondering as well so, the question he's basically asking is, how have I drilled the portholes, repositioned portholes in E-Deck? And I think he's concerned really around the scale of the Titanic stuff, but I'm going to cover the whole of E-Deck. If you've got this scale of the Titanic photo etch, okay, you will see that you get um, B, C, D and a little bit of E-Deck, okay? And it's the same on the stern. Now, I don't have a piece of photo etch to show you for the stern, um, other than my good set that I'm gonna be using on the model, which I haven't taken off the frets. If you remember, this was just some scrap that was sent to me by Alex Kindly for me to do experimentation with. So there we go. Um, so yeah, the question is, is basically how, how am I drilling out these repositioned holes on the, on the, um, on the bow like you can see I can't get the, if I get the camera over here there we go how am I drilling out these holes well I've actually milled slots but if I hadn't milled slots what I would basically do is get the photo etch in the right position mark with a felt tip or magic marker or something through the portholes where they are and then drill them through and then drill them bigger drill them out to say three millimeters so that you can't see the plastic behind and then also when you put them on, it will stop any glue oozing up through those portholes. I've milled these slots so that I can lay acetate in behind. Um, if you don't have a milling machine, it's going to be extremely difficult to do. And if you're going to try it with a Dremel, though, and this would be fine with a Dremel, but taking out these behind would be very difficult indeed. Um, as, as some of you will know what I've done here, if you look in here, you can see I've actually machined slots in the plastic to thin the plastic out so that you get a thin wall effect rather than having this two millimeter thick plastic so um <clears throat> there we go so that's how i would do those now on the stern it's a little bit of a different story because there is for instance there's a porthole missing in the photo etch that you're going to need to drill if you're a rivet carrier like me and things like that bother you um, there is also look at the position of these portholes there is a slight shift in them. And the only thing I can think is what Alex has done is he's actually shifted the porthole so that the doors line up. Um, it's a very, very slight shift. It's probably not even one whole pitch, but um, I noticed it when I started doing all this milling. So I'm gonna correct mine and, and get it right. Um, unfortunately, this is what aftermarket people are generally facing. Um, and I've said this on a number of occasions, if you look at Edward, they will often make photo etch sets to fit the model. Not everybody is like me, not everybody's as crazy as me and wants to cut everything about. The one of the example I always use is the Hong Kong models B17 in 132nd scale, which is, for accuracy, is, is, is well. Um, <clears throat> the instrument panel on that model is shaped like that. OK, because Hong Kong models have got the actual shape of the, the nose incorrect on the model. It should be flatter. They've corrected it on the 48th scale, but not the 32nd scale. So they've got basically a round nose underneath the cockpit when it should be. It should be flattened out on the top. So the instrument panel, likewise, should be flattened out on the top. So people would look at the Edward instrument panel and say that's the wrong shape. But what Edward have had to do is made it to fit the kit because not everybody is going to bother cutting the nose about of their £300 model to make the nose flat. So that's what they do. And that's what Alexander has done here. He's made the photo etch to fit the model and sacrificed some porthole position accuracy, which unless you're a bloody idiot like I am, the porthole accuracy isn't going to bother you at all. It's going to look absolutely fine. But um, I'm going to change mine because... That's just the way I am. 
so yeah there is a porthole missing there and there is a, um, a slight position shift in these portholes behind that area in between these doors there's a door there and there's a door there I believe and it's slightly out just slightly okay it's, it's literally like a millimeter so um, might not even worth changing but I probably have a look at it anyway so from what I can gather what Peter is saying to me is he is trying to use my porthole drilling jigs which I've got an example here as I'm not prepared and I've made these porthole drilling jigs that you basically hit, hold into the model and then drill through and it sounds like what he's trying to do is hold this in place hold the jig over it and then drill through but I wouldn't do that as I say I would hold your photo etch in place get it in the right position mark where the holes are and then drill through and then drill through three millimeters or four millimeters with a big drill so you don't see the plastic in behind and you don't get the glue oozing as I've already said so that is basically that um, when it comes to these portholes here in between the photo etch <clears throat> you have to remember when you're doing your portholes there are third there are formers inside the hull which are basically big u-shaped <clears throat> pieces of steel that all the riveting is that all the riveting all the plating is riveted to so every now and again you've got bulkheads but in between those bulkheads there are formers which are like like the skeleton of a dinosaur if you can imagine um so yeah they, they sort of go along and uh, and then the, all the sheeting is is riveted to that and these these formers are 36 inches apart on the ship up to a point on your model about six inches in from either end and then they reduce from 36 to 33 to 30 to 27 and they determine the porthole spacings because I'll explain this if you look on here you can see you've got some rivet lines here going vertically down and they are the formers all right so we've got 36 inches 36 inches 36 inches and you can see you've got a porthole there's one there one there miss one one there miss one one there miss one and it goes along like that and they stay at a 36 inch pitch likewise you should see the portholes line up vertically now these you can see here these line up vertically okay and then you've got here you've got one missed and then that one lines up with the, with a miss and that one lines up with a miss that one lines up with a miss and you can see that now they're staggered but they always fall between these 36 inch lines so in the main air, main midship area of the hull they should always be 36 72 um, so 108 uh, 144 that's how they should go okay so with trumpeter what they've done they've got all these portholes here marked out on the hull and you can see that I've actually plugged these holes up that are incorrect let me bring you in you can see that I've plugged up the incorrect ones and as we get to a point about midship you can see it starts to go completely wrong and nearly every hole is wrapped is wrong and you can see here we've got half a pitch half a pitch out okay and it gets worse and worse as you go back you can see you've got more and more of the white plastic showing so that's what's happened they've lost their pitch and the the portholes then don't line up with the portholes above anymore so it, to me it starts to look odd the former's form vertical lines they don't at any point tip over okay so they will always be vertically aligned so they, they could be vertically aligned with another porthole they'll be vertically aligned with another port a space between two other portholes you get my meaning now to mark them vertically um, what I do come along with a caliper like so okay set the caliper to the center of the hole and then just run along the bottom of the plate and just make a make a line and then and then mark out your holes and draw them through plugging the holes that are already there <clears throat> now you know in the hole there they aren't drilled through so they are just an indentation I've come along with a piece I think it's 1.3 millimeter plastic rod I think from memory you have to measure the holes basically puddled the um, the hole with some uh, tummy extra thin Ta -da. and then put the plastic rod in hold it there for a few seconds snip it off don't try and snip it off flush you'll just end up pulling it out leave a sort of millimeter on there or something and then leave it for a couple of days to go hard literally even for a couple of days it needs to be solid you don't want to start messing around with these while the glue is still not completely cured and then you can go from there any that are half out you can drill through if you want to okay and then plug you can draw them all through if you want to and then plug them but make sure your plastic rod isn't a really tight fit 
um, you want the glue to get around it. If you have the plastic rod really tight, when you put the glue on there, it won't capillary around. If you put the glue in first, you'll just push the glue out with the plastic rod. So you always want a little bit of play. It's the same when you're, you know, you're making your brass handles on your model tanks. If the brass is 0.5, drill the hole 0 0.6, 0 0.65, so that some super glue can stay around the rod. So many people drill a 0.5 hole, they put the 0.5 brass in, and then when you put your super glue on, whether it be thin or whatever, it won't capillary around. If they put their super glue in the hole first, or they put the super glue on the brass, when you push it in, it just wipes the glue away, and the brass isn't actually glued in. Always leave a gap for the glue to do its thing. Because my chips are just they keep rolling off my tongue. The other thing is, uh, Peter mentioned about using super glue and talcum powder or whatever bicarbonate soda to fill these. No, don't do that. I've said this so many times before. You can see up. This is the second time I've made this video because the first one I messed up. Um, if you if you've got your hole, let me start again here. So you've got your there's your side of your hole. You've got an indentation, okay. So you fill it with your super glue and, and talcum powder, or whatever. So now you've got this raised area here. When you sand it, you will actually end up producing that okay because the sander will push down in rise up over the super glue because it's harder and then push down in unless you've got something like these things which i've just done a review of these infini um clear files but i would say they're probably not coarse enough for doing this you're going to end up with that okay so always use plastic rod use styrene cement don't use super glue keep super glue away from anything you need to sand it's like with all these joints down here, where I've done all these hole corrections, if I had super glue in these joints, it would make leveling this out a complete nightmare because the plastic, you know, the, the, if I come along with my sanding stick, come along here, okay, I mean, although this is hard, it does have some com compliance in it, you can see. What it would do, it would ride up over the super glue here and then go down in and then ride up and I would end up with a awful surface it would look terrible i mean if i wanted to do some canning like on a missouri hull or something it would look great but for this it wouldn't look right at all so um you can see this is still coming along uh so that's how i drill those holes there i've told you about drilling those holes back there so basically for this video i think that is it so peter asked me the question how do i deal with the holes on edec that's how um do I recommend using super glue and talcum powder? No, keep it away from the models. Don't use it anywhere where you need to do sanding, unless it's unless it's you know if it's got like a nose of an aircraft or something that's not flat, then you're going to be fine. If you want to spend forever sanding and go about with filler and everything, then fine. But I wouldn't recommend using. Um... See now, even Jess agrees. What do you reckon, Jess? What do you reckon, Jess? Yeah, she, she, she's saying, don't use super glue. It's not good stuff. Oh, and it smells. She says it smells as well. Yeah. All right. So there we go. So anyway, guys, um, how often you get a modeling video and a dog talks to you, is it? Hey? <laughs> well, I suppose there are some dogs about. Never mind. Um, so there we go. And then when it comes to the stern, the very stern, I may as well talk about this now while I'm here. The trumpeter kit is... Ugh, these portholes, because they haven't used slide mold technology, or they, 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 they've got a mold that slides apart, they haven't used anything that slides in the plane of the windows. These portholes up around here, up under here, are terrible. They, they're huge ovals, so drill them, plug them, whatever, uh, with some plastic rod, and then just sand them and redraw them afterwards. And remember, when you drill them, don't, don't drill like this, okay? The drill should always be perpendicular to the surface. So drill there, drill there, drill there. And as you come around, you will come up and your drill will get more and more vertical as you get to here and, and then you're vertical again. Okay? So that's the way to do things. Someone at the door. Quite incredible. That was the neighbour's ball came over. So Jess obviously heard it come over. That's what she was barking at. So she wasn't talking to you. She was talking to the neighbour's ball. Um, so yeah, these portholes here, they're all out. Uh, so fill all of those. Fill all of those underneath and then redraw them yourself because Trumpeter have got them because of their limitations with their moulding. It's, it, I mean, you couldn't expect them to make a 97 piece mould tool to get all these right. So, you know, just just if you're if you're worried about accuracy, just redraw them. So that's it for now, guys. I'm going to try and get another video out for you today um, regarding beginners and this kit and everything and doing some stuff around that. So. Um, I'll see you all later. The videos for the hull 
corrections have been taken down as you've probably noticed um, I have my reasons which I may or may not explain one day but um, they will be back just not yet uh, and um, I'll get another video up to show you soon once all this is done because I'm really happy with how it's coming out I think I am going to cut the hole and widen it because it is too narrow in the centre and I've gone this far and the other thing is when you look at it here it's just sort of from there to there it's dead straight and I don't think Titanic was dead straight it certainly was on the deck area but not down here it kind of the hole sort of came up like that and then and then in it was almost like a sort of bracket shape not like a hinge bracket or hinge and bracket the comedians no um they were comedians really hinge and bracket were cartoonists cartoons weren't they made from plasticine um I can't remember now anyway I'm, I'm waffling um which I always do so the hole basically came along it came out and then reached the point in the center where it was pretty much straight and then came in at the top which is called the tumble home apparently as people tell me tumble home people shout at me um so yeah I, I intend to um recreate that shape if I can and also um widen it slightly because it is too narrow in this midships area so luckily the deck seems to be the deck shape seems to be spot on but the actual area here is too narrow when you actually look at the side of the hull it's dead vertical it's dead straight parallel um, and it shouldn't be it sort of goes out like that and then in as I say like brackets like not hinge brackets brackets on your computer you know brackets that you put around letters not the square type brackets that you use in code the, the, the you know brackets brackety type brackets brackety brack yeah so I'll um I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching, guys. And like I said, I hope to get another video up for you today looking at the folks or the decking and everything. Bye for now.